Hello! <laughs> Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Rob Gegner, and he, we are here on this fantastic Thursday day uh, with the traveling mastermind. We've got Corey, we've got Chef Mike, we've got Valerie, and um, we're just here to be real. We're just here to be honest and uh, share with you a little slice of our entrepreneurial journeys. Um, today we're going to be talking about a couple things. We're going to be starting with um, procrastination. You know, the honest truth is I almost didn't get on today's hangout because I wasn't really feeling like it. I slept late. I, <laughs> I uh, did my T25 workout and that just completely exhausted me. And I've been trying to, you know, all of us get into a routine and then we find ourselves falling off and just like getting distracted and doing something else and that's fine but um, we're always in control and we're well, not always in control but we have the choice uh, to be in control of our lives and where we want to go so when we find ourselves being distracted and um, procrastinating we don't have to feel bad about it I mean that's just kinda what happens but we can just like accept it and be like okay that happened we got off a little tr uh, off track a little bit let's just get back on track and just keep going on the train towards where we want to head instead of getting lost in that distraction which a lot of people actually find themselves living their lives in that distracted world and they're never really in touch with uh, reality so we're gonna talk about that I was watching a spiritual documentary today about the words that you speak and and the language that you use that is very very powerful because it creates your your reality or existence. Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about vision, about our each individual visions and uh, the vision of this group, the Traveling Mastermind as a collective. And uh, Mike had an awesome experience yesterday meeting with the lawyer for a restaurant that is opening that is going to change the world, which I'm really excited about because we're, we're going to have a, a really nice partnership with that uh, in the future. But for now, um, let's close our eyes and start with the meditation of the day. This is just to ground yourself. Who knows where your head's at right now, but let's all focus on our breath. Deep breath in. And just notice the landscape of your mind as an outdoor scene of your choice. Inside your mind right now, you could be at an ocean, by the beach, on top of a mountain, in a rainforest. Wherever you are right now, I want you to look up in your mind's eye and notice the sky. Is it clear? Are there clouds? And if there's clouds, I want you to notice those clouds. How do they look? Are they white and fluffy? Are they moving very slowly? Are they moving very quickly? What color are they? Are they dark gray? Are they black? And those clouds are just your thoughts. So now I want you to focus on the sun behind those clouds. It's shining through. Just notice those clouds and their movement. They're slowly moving out of your mind's eye. And now all you see is sunshine on that landscape that you've created and that you're currently living in right now. I want you to feel your feet grounded, rooted to the floor. To notice the stillness in your body. To notice an energy moving up and down your spine. A confidence that's taken over. That's informing your subconscious that you are capable of doing whatever it is you want to do in this life. It doesn't matter if you've previously dealt with fear or anxiety. Right now in this moment, you are unstoppable. You are fearless. You are confident. You are capable. You are an infinite being worthy of doing many things. And as you pay attention to your breath, 
and how you feel inside. You are reminded of your true greatness. And your posture straightens up. Your back straightens. Feet firmly planted on the ground. Shoulders loose, relaxed. And you feel good about yourself. You feel good about the day that's ahead of you or the day that's just passed. Now I want you to slowly come back to your body and when you're ready open your eyes. Awesome. Now we're ready to start. I feel like a yoga teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Namaste. Cool. Namaste. Om. That's crazy, right? Like the, the documentary, I'm really getting into um, re, um, watching a lot more spiritual documentaries. There was a point in my life where I watched a lot of like health and nutrition and um, spiritual documentaries, but then I kind of stopped. And so now there's all these new ones that I haven't seen. And there's this one called Home that I wanted to watch. I haven't watched it yet. But this one that I was just watching was called Chimatica. Just found out about it. And it talks about a lot of things. Like, oh, my God. It ta all right. The thing that I wanted to talk about was um, vibrations and words and language. When you're, when you're speaking, it forms those vibrations. So uh, they, they did this thing that they've taken, like, certain words, right? Let's say you have a candle. And they've taken certain words from Sanskrit and uh, or uh, or another language like ancient ancient languages, right? And if you say these words in these languages to a flaming candle, it will not only like flame up and like change, but the color of the flame will change. So you can literally manipulate matter with the words because the words have certain frequencies of these ancient languages and the language that we speak right now, the modern English, kind of cuts off our connection to the divine. So you can't really do that with English. And another thing, weird thing they were talking about is, you know, like laws um, and, and, and we're, we can be outside. It's, it's weird to get into, right? We can be outside of the law because the laws that we have, like parking tickets, birth certificates, uh, driver's licenses, all these sort of like paper certificates, they don't really apply to us because we're natural persons. But when they issue us these these documents, it, it, we, we become like a, a corporation per person. I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird because there's a society of all these... I just ch just check out the documentary. I can't really explain it. <laughs> what was well, it? Uh, it's called Chimatica. What? Chimatica. Chimatica. K Y M. Yeah, it sounds crazy when I talk about it, but uh, it, it it really makes sense that literally, like, you can get out of going to court by by um, saying that you're a natural person rather than a corporate person. Because if you notice, on like your birth certificate, on your driver's license. They've taken your name and turned you into a corporation because that's all under a maritime law uh, that only applies to corporations and and see they're, they're using like word like language manipulation it only applies to banking and corporations so it doesn't apply to natural beings like humans like us but that's how they kind of got us because the the, the United States went bankrupt in like the 1900s. And to repay their debts, they're using people as collateral. And so that's why our names are in caps on these, these documents to signify that we're a corporation. So it's it's this weird thing. It sounds like a conspiracy, but it makes sense if you watch the documentary. I don't even know why I'm talking about this, but uh, I don't know. I'm I thought it was are. fascinating. <laughs> Actually, you know, that, that kind of ties into... Uh, to why I want to do the restaurant. Not that we have to get into that right now, but I'm glad you brought it up, but I'm going to have to watch it. Thanks. Definitely get, I'll give get you, into Rob, that. I'll give you, know? you some support. I know exactly what you're talking about, and it <laughs> sounds crazy, but I've actually, I, didn't, I haven't watched the documentary, but I've watched other YouTube clips and things that explain that, that you know, there's pretty much two of us. There's our natural human being ourselves and then there's like a paper us the the yeah. thing that represents anything from your credit score to your um, birth certificate social security number your bank statements everything 
And just oh. like you said, if you got to go to court, but it depends. There's like three different ways they write your name. You know, it could be all lowercase. It could be just the first letters capitalized, or it could be um, your whole name capitalized. And I can't remember which is which, but, yeah, I mean, if it's spelled a certain way, honestly, you, you don't have to go to court. It's... Um, I forget what they call it. It's like claiming sovereignty or something like that. But yeah, That's I would definitely look into it before <laughs> you not go to court. <laughs> so if anybody <laughs> has a yeah. court trial coming up or whatever, definitely do the research on it um, before you claim your sovereignty. Um, so we're not <laughs> we're not lawyers here, so don't take our legal advice. But yeah, yeah. I'm gonna back you up. I've heard of it, and it's not crazy. <laughs> It's like they say, why'd you miss your court date? Uh, it's on the internet? Yeah. <laughs> the internet this right? webinar said I didn't have to go, so I just did <laughs> right. And I listen to Sorry. everything the internet says. <laughs> but Judge, have you heard of the traveling mastermind? It's, oh, I didn't have to go. Museum. <laughs> Uh, you, you, were, you were breaking up there, Mike. Um, so when they call you to the stand, uh, you, you go in there, and it's a significance. You know, like you're sitting there next to the judge and the prosecution, and that little booth, they open up that hatch. That's that's signifying you boarding a ship because um, it had something to do with, like, the oceans, like the maritime law with all corporations. So you're, like, symbolically boarding a ship. And uh, they, they had to do something with, like, trading money because the judge turns into a banker when they're in a court of law or something. That's why every court case has some sort of financial sum attached to it. But I don't know. I'm done talking about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's segue into our visions, right? Um, and where, where, where does this come from? It's like, so we're in control of our lives. Uh, so pretty much the point we're trying to make here is we're not letting the government... We're not letting the courts, we're not letting people outside of us um, control our lives because there's a lot of people who live in fear, they live in anxiety, and they're, they're terrified of breaking the law. They're terrified of getting a ticket or doing something wrong. And maybe that stems from our childhood, maybe that stems from a past life, who knows where it stems from, but we have a choice to step out of that. We can focus on the fear, we can focus on doing something wrong, and being arrested and going to jail, which is really not that bad. Uh, I've never been to jail, but uh, if you think of like Hurricane Carter, who was um, incarcerated um, uh, for a murder he didn't even commit, like he could have, he had the choice, right? Everyone has a choice. That's what we're talking about right now. He could have been like, oh, poor me, like even, but but no, he 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 didn't look at it as a bad thing, even though he was completely innocent. He he did something positive. He actually studied law, and I think he became a lawyer or something in jail, he became very, very educated and learned, um, and he was finally released, and he just, he did something with his life, even when he was in solitary confinement. So we can focus on the fear, or we can focus on our vision, and of what we want to create in our lives. Um, so, so that leads into Mike, who has an amazing story. He's attracted some amazing people and circumstances into his life. His passion that he's had for a long time is to be a chef and to open up his own restaurants. He's worked in so many different restaurants, and now he has this glorious vision of the future. Like me, he's an advocate for health. He's into like organic foods. He, he's only into like cooking healthy things for people um, rather than things that are not so healthy. And um, He's, he's just an incredibly skilled uh, person in the kitchen. And I've tried his food. His food's delicious, by the way, <laughs> at, the, at the last event. Uh, so something happened yesterday that he's attracted into his life, and I want him to share that story. Yeah, well, uh, well thank you. And uh, after – well, actually, before we get into that, I, I wanted to talk about the whole jail thing. It's funny you mentioned that. That was always, as a kid, and by a kid, I mean, like, up to five months ago. That was always my backup plan. Was uh, if I if things go horribly wrong, I'll just be the chef in a prison, and nobody's gonna mess with the guy that holds the knives and controls the food. I'll be fine, and I'll be able to write cookbooks, and nobody will mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> so that yeah, if if for some reason I can't pull off this restaurant thing, I'll just go to jail for something ridiculous, and I'll be fine. I'll never be homeless. I know that. Uh, so. Yeah, is, is the is the jail chef also a jailbird? 
Or do they like outsource that to like a real chef? No, I, I, well, the way I had envisioned it was that I'd probably do something pretty terrible in, in a fit of rage caused by one of my cooks that just screwed up, and I'd probably have to go to jail, you know, not for fun. And I would just make the best out of it. That was always my backup, backup plan. But now that I've got this whole restaurant thing that's officially up and moving, I think I'm going to go with that instead. That's, that um, sounds like a better option. Yeah, I will. I, I like this on that, by the way, in case you really want them. Wait, what's that? I have the facts on that, in case you really want them. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. They don't yeah. outsource their help. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> she's, she's, Valerie's got some... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like she's been there before. Yeah, we're gonna have to talk about that on the side, Valerie, unless you want to share why you know so I have much. About it. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, well, I, actually, after the other mastermind the other day that I was on with Daphne, uh, I was doing some meditation, and one of my friends, who I've been friends with since pre-K, he's been rather negative about all the new business stuff I'm doing. Like, it, so much so that. Uh, we've kind of parted ways just a little. I mean, I've known this guy for over, I mean, almost 28 years, I think. And uh, the one thing he said was, well, if you're going to open up restaurants, you got to find a lawyer. And I was in the habit of not listening to anything he said because he had been so negative lately. But I know he's he, he, he's he's watching out for me. So I, I, I got out of my own way and, and let his opinion affect me in a positive way. And uh, I sat there and thought about it. And I remembered I, I had made a dish for this guy that was at a, a, a baseball stadium. I was working in this baseball stadium just a couple months ago trying out this restaurant idea. There was just a, a concession stand that they didn't know what to do with, so I moved in. And uh, a, another friend of mine from grammar school shows up, and I haven't seen him in it had been 10 years maybe. And he tried the product, and he goes, you know, if you ever want to open up a restaurant, I'm a lawyer and I do stuff with restaurants and I, I didn't even think anything of it but I was sitting meditating the other day and his name popped in my head and the whole conversation replayed so I actually cut my meditation short and sent him a text message I didn't even know I still had his phone number turns out this guy got into law so he could protect restaurants if wow. one of you guys goes in and, and claims that you choked on a chicken bone and you want to sue me this guy's already handled those cases before. Matter of fact, he's represented some of my bosses in the past. And something he didn't know is, back in the 90s, the first restaurant I worked in was his dad's restaurant. And his dad's restaurant is why he got into this form of law. So it all just worked out perfectly to where he's been training and learning all this stuff, building up to wanting to be involved in one restaurant chain. He said he doesn't want to be a part of a, a lawyer firm. He wants to be a part of a restaurant that's big enough to retire him eventually. And he was just waiting for the right one. Well, then I walk in. And, uh, <laughs> and we have this incredible meeting. And just by circumstance, the place I tried to meet up, I, I forgot I'd been kicked out of. I've been banned from all 38 <laughs> grocery stores, and that's another story for another day. Uh, and I walked in. Get this, dude. I walked in, and something I said on Twitter about this place got me in trouble. As soon as I walked in the door, the first person that saw me is their marketing director, and she goes, well, you're not welcome here, especially not today. And I was like, hey, Marcy, how are you? She goes, no, get out of here. She goes, first, you're banned from all the places. Then you're going to talk shit on Twitter. I said, whoa, 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 I put my opinion about a dish that you guys messed up. How would, what, my opinion, okay, you know what, I'll just go. I'll go, I'll go. So I left, and it, in a hurry, I left, and I, I had the grill in the back of my car. You know the car I'm talking about. We were listening to the music out of it, out in the, the event. And I backed out in a hurry, and I slammed into a pillar in the parking lot and dented my van. And I'm just, like, old me would have gotten mad enough to go to jail. But I'm laughing my way out of the parking lot. I'm like, this is totally a sign. I just, this is the wrong space. So I reset up the me the meeting with my lawyer friend, and uh, I pick a bar that I used to go to all the time. And by used to, I mean, you know, three months ago when I was still drinking every single day. And the bar back is my buddy Jack from kindergarten. I didn't know he was going to be working that day. 
and he doesn't know that I've got a lawyer coming to talk to me about the restaurant chain. A lawyer that, you know, having a lawyer was his whole idea. And he didn't know that the lawyer was our friend from grammar school. Wow. And my friend, the lawyer, didn't know that Jack was going to be there either. So we had this weird little mini reunion. And while Jack is behind the bar loading up all the beer and being a bar back, which he hates, he's eavesdropping on what David and I are talking about, the lawyer. And by the end of it, I walked the lawyer out so we could look at the dent of my car and laugh about the ridiculousness of my life. <laughs> and I go back in, and Jack's like, dude, I'm so happy you're doing this. Finally, it looks like you're really ready. And I've heard that from a number of people. And to get support back from him was huge. But, uh, you know, he, he's my heterosexual life mate. We've been friends forever. So to have him on board again with what I'm doing is awesome. Even though I wrote a whole screenplay about he and I, and he wouldn't read it because he's a wuss. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> so... I've got all these cooks that are coming out of the woodwork now that I'm putting this stuff. And since I talked to the lawyer, four more people have messaged me. And they're like, hey, the, what you're doing on the blogs is ridiculous and awesome and I can't wait. There's one guy in Austin who knows I'm going to open up a, a, a restaurant there. He said, it's about time. He said, you know, all the cooks, whenever you weren't around, were always talking about how we were tired of you being the second guy in charge. How you were always the one that was supposed to be in charge, but you never had the balls to do it or you were too fucked up. I mean, I was drunk. I did a lot of drugs. And I did all that because I couldn't get out of my own way. I always, and I mentioned this with Daphne the other day, I always felt a little different than the rest of the cooks. And I had all these weird ideas that I didn't know how to smash together and turn into something positive. So I drowned it in booze. And uh, once I found all you guys that think like I do, and being in a building full of people that think like we do, just made it so much easier to go, you know what? All those years weren't wasted. It was me just getting ready. Mm. This whole plan comes back from 2003, and we were going to call it the food hole because it was a, a, a play off of the Whole Foods company that I helped grow. And all of those customers, like I mentioned in that speech in that parking lot in Charlotte, all of those customers have eaten the food that I've produced. That Some of my recipes are still out there in commissaries for Whole Foods, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the story of the vegan Bowery burger one day that I made as a joke, but um, they're still eating it. It's still out there. So one reason I had to get out of all the kitchens that I'd ever worked in was the food that we used was all GMO, all Monsanto, and just garbage. And I had to use it to keep my job because my food costs, if it went too high, I'm gone. And it just weighed heavy on me, man. You know. I knew that I had to use these chickens that were injected with all this garbage and they were cheaper and easier to produce and all these vegetables that were sprayed down with pesticides so they could grow in smaller areas and it was cheaper. And you know, we all vote with our dollar bill and I was voting so many different ways with the dollar bill whenever I was purchasing, you know, I'd cook for 5,000 people and I'd have to get 5,000 pieces of shitty chicken and 5,000 pieces of horrible zucchini, and none of this was good for these people. And there's kids and they didn't even know. Life. Yeah. And so if I wasn't buying that, and I wasn't selling it, and I wasn't making my money doing it, that would have been one less person making Monsanto think it's okay to do what they do to us. And every dollar I spent outside of that restaurant, outside of that catering facility, was earned by supporting Monsanto, and I was pissed, and I was drunk, and I didn't know what to do about it. Um, but now I do. Now I definitely know what to do about it. You know, and and that's I've seen every documentary out there on it. You know, and I can't wait to get away from what they've done to food. Uh, the fact that they have something called a Terminator gene in their seed, so. A farmer can't use the crop from this year. Any of the seeds that come out of it are dead. They call it the Terminator gene. There's some asshole that back in the 80s named the chemical, and I mentioned this the other day, natural flavoring. That's a chemical, and it's in goddamn everything. That's not okay. We're feeding it to our kids. I, I'm not going to rant and rave about food anymore. But what you were talking about earlier, though, people have become the crop. You know, they feed us yeah. this garbage just like they feed the cows that garbage. And then we eat the cows that have been fed this garbage. And 
all of our dollar bills cycle back into what Monsanto is doing to us, and it makes us <laughs> ill. And I'll tell you what, a lot of the doctors out there, they don't make money unless we're ill. Show me a doctor that will prescribe you bitter melon to help you get over uh, a high blood sugar. They won't do it, but I'll tell you what, my dad who's a diabetic, I made him a smoothie with bitter melon, which is not easy to find. They sell it in those uh, Asian markets that smell like Asian markets. You know you, you know the smell. If you've been to a Chinatown in any city, you know you're near Chinatown. It, it's in there. You just fight through the smell, and there's these weird things. They look like uh, really angry cucumbers. There's like spikes shooting out of them everywhere. Blend that up, and you can lower. The doctor could not believe how fast my dad lowered his blood sugar. She knows about this stuff a little, but there's so many people, she wouldn't make money. And she said, hey, go uh, grind up a bitter melon. She doesn't work in the grocery industry. It wouldn't benefit her financially at all. So she gives him a pill with all these side effects. It all ties in. So to break out of that. Whole, yes. Now, were you asking something? Okay. No, I said as a side note. Rhonda and Brian and I were in a company, and they used to have people that were specialized knowledge in all areas of life. And there's a man who was a designer of pharmaceuticals who became a rogue chemist. And if you want to put this in your notes, the peopleschemist.com really serves because I don't believe in Western medicine. I'm sorry. I, I heal, you know, I do holistic, whatever. But people's chemist, he has amazing things that are really inexpensive, but they're natural. I'm all about organic. I hate any shit that goes in my mouth that isn't. And, you know, take a look at it. The PSA. Rogue Chemist? The People's Chemist. The, pe the People's yes. Chemist .com. Shane Ellison. Cool. He okay. doesn't hold back. Awesome. Sorry. Yeah. I need to know all about that. Uh, I, I know there's other people out there. The more I talk about it instead of just drinking about it, the more people I meet that care and, and, and have the same vision, you know. I mean, I don't know if y'all saw it, but in the parking lot, one girl came up to me in tears after I mentioned it, after I talked about the restaurant chain that's going to fight against, I love that it's uh, the fight against evil, Dave Wood. Because <laughs> I've been trying to fight against my own version of evil too, you know. And uh, she's a celiac, and she doesn't know where to go eat because of her gluten intolerance. And dude, the, the studies that are going on with gluten is, oh, by the way, one of the first conversations I had about this with a stranger, he happens to be a doctor. And mm -hmm. I brought up a whole string of things that are all connected to uh, gluten intolerance and how I think possibly raising dopamine levels in people could cure it. And he and I talked at length about uh, synthetic dopamines and dopamine receptors and how we could, I say we, but it was just my weird idea, and now he's working on it. He could find a way to cure celiac disease, restless leg syndrome, which I can't believe is a real thing, um, schizophrenia, and uh, Alzheimer's. They could all very likely be tied together and be cured by raising dopamine levels. And this dude who's sitting there, he's been in med school forever, he said, why would you think of that? He goes, I've been in med school forever trying to figure out how to cure some of this stuff. And in this weird drunken conversation with a stranger, you just pointed out one of the most obvious. He said, well, that's it. I wasn't in those classes. I wasn't distracted by all that knowledge. I just looked into what dopamine did. I looked into what the body did whenever it got glutens, and I figured out if you could have more dopamine, you could fix all the problems that, that glutens have done. Now, it's not going to make you able to eat gluten because really we shouldn't. And they're doing studies where it's not even about the gluten itself. It's about what's sprayed on the gluten. Back to Monsanto. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so there's this guy that's working on some weird idea that I had once I finally started meditating and, and, and started putting out what I, I – I didn't think anybody would care about this stuff, and that's stupid because there's so many movies about it, and it's about life. Monsanto has – copyrighted seed. They have trademarked life, and that's dangerous. And there's only one Monsanto, so it's it's a big business. It's a monopoly, and I'm sure that there's... Uh, I'm not going to get into all the weird... Uh, yeah, I'll just shut up about it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my vision. I'm going to open up a bunch of restaurants that don't sell shit. 
<laughs> it, uh, the, the mission statement is quality ingredients from a quality crew to quality customers. So if you want a slice of pepperoni and a Coke, you can piss off because we're not going to sell you that. Now, if you want, mm -hmm. if you want a hot copa or a sopressata, these are some quality. Pepperoni is the number one ingredient on pizza because it's dirt cheap. It's the most boring salami out there. And if you like pepperoni, that's fine. Wait till you try the stuff we're going to have. It's going to blow your socks off. And all the drinks are going to be from handcrafted people that give a shit about the drinks, you know. It's not going to be anything from InBev. You're not going to get a Budweiser and a slice. You're going to get some really quality beer, stuff that monks make, people that dedicate their whole life to making a dish, an ingredient, one thing perfect. They're going to be there, and that's that's what we're going to be selling. So, yeah, awesome. I'll shut up. I think I bored Corey. Sorry, how, Corey. <laughs> how, how can – I don't even think Corey's on here. Um, how, can, how can people get in touch with you, and do you have, like, a Kickstarter or a – or an Indiegogo or something where like you're raising money for this that people can contribute financially to you in your restaurant? Absolutely. The Kickstarter, it might actually be up today. i got to check. But uh, that's going to be all on my website. If people follow me on Facebook, I'm Mike Couste. I think I screwed Yeah. C-O-U-S-T-E is my last name. And Mike is the name that I go by. That's actually not my real first name, but I won't tell you what that what? is. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, that's all part of marketing, too. It's all of the chef coat, the, the, the fact that I don't use my real name. It's all part of marketing. Um, the secret's out. I don't uh, even know who you are anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on uh, nolashef504.com. That's going to be about the marketing business that I'm doing and the grocery side of things. Uh, then you can find me on uh, nolashef504.net. That's going to be more about the gluten-free Paleolithic diet, which I lost 30 pounds on in two months. Um, and then I'm on Twitter. If you really want to hear some dirty, foul chef humor, that's, uh, guess what, at NolaChef504 on Twitter. And I think that's everything. That's all the things that I've got. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and just like you, my, uh, Chef Mike, I can go in for days on all the crappy shit about um, Monsanto and what they're doing. You, you <laughs> And I'm just going to get this out there. Because um, I was thinking about not t t talking about it, but um, they use you know natural flavors. You were just talking about natural flavors. Yeah. That comes from a beaver's anus. Some of it, yes. Um, That's insane. Yeah. It's called like col colostrum. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, just like they do a lot of gross stuff, and um, it's just something that I don't support. So I'm all for a natural restaurant. And uh, speaking about visions, one of my visions is creating a theme park. So you look at it and they're just, they're just serving shit to people. Making, and I looked at the theme park industry. It's like, wow, they've come so far. Like Walt Disney, his vision was realized, but it just like halted at one point and just became about greed and consumerism and more unhealthy food, like, oh, my God. I'm a vegan. I don't eat, like, dairy or, or, uh, or meat or anything. But I was watching, like, I'm obsessed with watching um, videos from from uh, uh, Walt Disney World. And there's this one restaurant they have on the boardwalk, and they have this ice cream dish. It's called, and literally, if you eat this by yourself, you are guaranteed to get diabetes, even if you, like, eat it with, like, share it with four people. It's called the kitchen sink. Wow. So, literally, they serve this ice cream in a real literal kitchen sink. There's eight scoops of ice cream in four different flavors. There's marshmallow topping, there's hot fudge, there's caramel sauce, there's pound cake, there's bounties, there's cookies, there's a sliced up candy bar, there's a whole banana. This thing is insane. Maybe I would have tried to eat it back in my earlier days, like one of the days when I like tr attempted to eat this like 10 pound hamburger back when I was eating meat, you know, because I like doing stuff like that. But now I would never even touch that. But like that's what most Americans are used to eating. So my vision is to create a theme park that is completely vegan, but people wouldn't even know. Like literally, I can have vegan versions of the kitchen sink. I there's there's dude, there's in New York City where I used to live, right? There's this place called Stogo. It's it's a straight up ice cream re restaurant, but it's all vegan and you wouldn't even know unless someone like told you about it. They have like coconut uh, milk, almond milk based, soy milk based uh, ice cream and it tastes exactly like the real version. 
there's this place in Chicago uh, I went to. It's called uh, Karen's on Green, and Karen has like three different kinds of vegan restaurants. She's got like a diner version, a fast food version, and like an upscale version, which is Karen's on Green. It's Karen with a Y. And she has dedicated her life to health. And literally, you walk in there, you, again, you wouldn't even know that it's a vegan restaurant. And, um, and they serve meat, quote unquote, meat dishes, but it's all like soy based or, or uh, you know, um, different, different fake meat, but, but it's, it's healthy for you. It's not totally healthy for you, but it's healthier than meat. And so that's what the the theme park would have because it's sure. offering options, and so we can we can you can you can satisfy everyone's cravings without having to destroy the planet, without having to endanger any lives of animals, and it's just like kind of the progression of where the future is going anyway, right? Everyone's getting on the the, the health kick. Everyone knows about non-GMO stuff. So what Chef Mike is doing with the restaurant industry, I want to take that concept and implement it into theme parks, not only have rides and attractions that stimulate people's consciousnesses, raise their vibrations, have them have breakthrough experiences, just like Disney World, but like they're learning and they're growing as human beings and they're having aha moments and they're learning more about themselves, they're learning how to create and generate wealth, they're learning and, and experiencing all these amazing things uh, while having fun in the guise of just having fun uh, and eating healthy food. So why shouldn't there be an all-vegan uh, theme park that you don't even know it's vegan. Like you go eat like a, a turkey leg or you go to eat like a chicken dish or a meat dish, just like these vegan restaurants that I met, mentioned before. Like that's where I see the future going. And me and Chef Mike and Valerie and Corey and everyone who's a part of the Traveling Mastermind, we're contributing to that future. Just by us having this conversation right now, we're setting the intention, we're putting out the vibrations right now to create that future. And everyone who's listening, you're a part of that right now because you're receiving our energy, you're receiving the intention. And that might inspire you. You might go to sleep tonight and realize that you have a dream for a ride and an attraction for a future theme park. You might have a dream for a dish uh, for a, uh, a, a, a restaurant that, that, you know, that you might want to create. You might have a dream where you're inspired to maybe eat a little less meat, eat a little less dairy, eat a little, a little less processed foods. Or you might just be inspired to do something kind to, to, to someone else, help, help someone else out, because that's the kind of atmosphere and environment that we're creating here. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yep. You know, uh, as far as speaking positively and, and, and putting your intention out there, I, any of my friends that have kind of bashed what I've been doing, I, I always tell them the same thing. Nobody that's successful did it on accident. They all had a plan. Mm -hmm. They talked about it. They thought about it. And just talking about it and thinking about it makes you act on it. It starts with an idea. And it starts with the way you talk. And then you start making choices just inborn. You don't even think about it. Every choice you make is leading towards your goal after you talk about it and often get it out there. So, yeah, I'm with you. That's why I'm here as often as I can be. By the way, I'm going to miss the next few days. i got to go down to Tampa to pick up one of my best soldiers in the cooking world. This guy is a beast. Dad fam. Once, uh, once you guys see the restaurant, he's going to be at my side. This guy is a badass. Uh, he and I survived Katrina together. Uh, we've been cooking together for over 10 years, and uh, we took about a two-year break where he thought he was going to do something in Tampa, and he was bored, so he, he's coming back to New Orleans, and I'm going to help him move down here. Um, and actually, I'm going to have a new setting behind me next time y'all see me because I'm moving into an apartment with that dude because he didn't have a place to live, so I left the house I was in uh, just to make sure he would come down here because he's that good at what he does, and I don't want to do it without him. So, uh, yeah. So I'll miss the next couple days, but uh, I'll be with you in spirit for sure. That's awesome, man. Let me know when that happens. Um, oh, anyone else want to share anything? Yeah, I, I'd like to. Um, I, I know it's a, and I'm saying this to totally like you know just from my heart. It's like going to these calls is important, not just to me, but to anyone who just might happen to pick it up. And it's not always easy to commit to it. However, um, someone might be requiring this service. And what if Rhonda and Brian or any other people just decide one day, hey, you know what, it's, 
And then what if that other person fell through the cracks because of that? So just mm. like, for example, I flew in from New York last night. We had lightning storms. I was on tarmac for three hours. I get to Boston. I'm a spontaneous person. I didn't check on hotel situation. There were no hotels. So I called my friend. He came and got me, brought me out to his home, been a great host. And I had literally an hour of sleep, and I had committed to being on the call to Australia at what I thought was 6 a.m., but I was supposed to be in Chicago because of the storm. I didn't. No, it was 7 a.m., so I got up an hour too early, missed me. <laughs> but it was important to me because I am glad someone did it for me. I'm glad that someone held their tenacity and everything else. So just remember in the back of your mind, there might be someone out there who really would be served by us being here. No matter what. I got shitty looking hair, I'm dead hair, but you know, it doesn't matter. We're here and present for people who who want their lives saved. Life saved, yeah. Exactly. I mean and then, I, we, we do have a powerful decision. The, despite how many people that we actually have right now, despite how many viewers that we have, I mean it's gonna grow. And it's just like when you're moving like a big ball up a hill, right? It's going to take some time and you might not see the fruits of your labor right away. It's like something that I'm trying to train myself to not get in the pattern of is, is instant gratification. And um, I've always generally been a patient person, but recently it's just like, ah, you know, you feel like the, the jitteriness, the antsiness, you just want something to happen. You just want to feel like you're progressing. You just want to feel like you, you're, you're creating something that your efforts are worth something, right? That that you ha you're getting some sort of result out of what you're doing, um, but maybe it, the timing's not right. Maybe you just need to keep persisting. Maybe like like you know that that funny image everyone talks about in the, in the <laughs> our industry with the, the dude with the pickaxe, right? Maybe you're three feet from gold. The dude who's like in a cave, like looking for these gems, and he's like super excited and going and going and going, and then like the next one, he's like an old man and he's just about to give up, right? Or he's, like, he's walking away, but he has like this much <clears throat> left. If he had just one tap, it would have it would have gone through and he would have found the gems. Like, we are three feet from gold. The darkest, the night is always darkest before the dawn. Like in that book uh, that I'm listening to called The Alchemist, um, he meets a crazy old king who can shapeshift and turn into different things. And one instance is when he turned into a rock of this dude who was looking for precious gems, and he like spent, and that was his personal legend, right? Everyone has their own personal legend, and he spent his entire life looking for a rare gem or like a green emerald or so, whatever it was, and he was just about to give up after years and years of hard work and labor and effort, right? He was just about to give up, and uh, fortune or this king. Um, noticed that and he shapeshifted and he turned himself into a rock and the dude was so angry he picked up this rock and he threw it and he threw it and hit another rock and finally that uncovered the gem so you know what I was about to like you know I don't I don't feel like doing this anymore just to be honest with you and and I'm not doing it for myself I realized I'm doing it for that one person who might come on here and hear us talking even if we don't feel like we're contributing that much, even if we don't feel like we're doing this this great thing. Because you may not feel like you have a huge purpose in life, but you do. But it, it all comes down to the other person that's on the receiving end and hearing hearing your voice or hearing your message or seeing or watching you. Because if you're on social media, if you're on Facebook, there's so many different people that are watching you, just seeing you're peeking over the fence to see what you're doing. They're watching how consistent you are with your message and with your action. Are you leading by example or not? Because if you do that, they're going to come around. Even the most negative people, if you keep going and you keep pursuing your dreams and your goals and keep just doing what you need to do, these people are going to come around. But if you stop and give up, they're probably never going to come around. And you're not going to be able to help them and affect them like you want to. So... Um, all I'm trying to say is just lead by example and just do it. That's why we committed to doing this every day. We're going to continue to do it. Even if I have to just do it by myself, it doesn't matter. I started it by myself, and I 
cool with just doing it by myself, but I'm really grateful that I have a team of people here that I have surrounded myself with these amazing entrepreneurs, these amazing human beings like Mike and Corey and Val and everyone else who's who's surrounded me with, surrounded who I'm here with. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sleepy. Um, yeah, it's just, just keep going. Just keep, don't give up. Even when you feel like you want to give up, it's just a test from the universe. When you first start something, it's beginner's luck. You might get lucky. But as you keep going and you have definitely a major definite purpose, the universe is going to test you. And it's going to throw things in your path to see if you're serious or not. So we are definitely serious. And Mike is going to realize his vision in a very short period of time. I'm going to realize my vision in a very short period of time having my theme park. Val is going to get her organization uh, to help children. Corey is going to get whatever he wants to get out of life. Everyone who I'm talking to you right now, if you stick with us, if you don't give up on your dreams and you don't give up on yourself and realize that there, this life is more about you and less about you but more about including yourself in the whole, seeing yourself as the whole rather than just like this one individual who's separate and disconnected from everyone, um, you're going to get what you want and you're going to create magic if you just keep going and don't give up. Can I uh, add to that real quick? Sure. You said that uh, you know you, you every once in a while feel anxious, like you want something to happen, but every day mm -hmm. you don't give up, that's something happening. That's right. a huge step. Giving up is the easiest. I mean, that, that's why that's why being successful is so difficult because giving up is so easy. Every single step is, is huge, and it might not feel like it, but if you know it is, it makes it easier. Just us being here and talking about it makes it easier for me to go on and do the rest of the day the way I have to do it. And I know some random cook is going to see some of these videos, and it might be two years from now, and it'll be like, holy shit, that's where, well, I can't say the name of the restaurant yet, but uh, that, that's where this all kind of came from, and uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the lawyer, David, I can officially say his name, I checked on that, uh, the lawyer, he said, uh, one thing that I need you to do, and and even the, the first investor, he said, one thing I want us to do, and he said, I don't think you're thinking big enough, like I mentioned. Uh, it's about fundraisers. Every year, our corporation, and it was funny that you mentioned corporations earlier too because that's what we're building right now. Our corporation every year is going to give 10% of our profits to different fundraisers that we find that we like. And that's a big part, a big drive for us to make more money so we can afford to do that and we can actually make a difference. And every corporation, this guy is going to, David is going to give me the facts on it. Every corporation he knows that does that is highly successful. Even corporations that I don't support that do, he, he, it's like corporate tethering. I forget what it's called, but I'll go ahead and tell you, uh, I'm not a fan of Chick-fil-A, but they are making it because, and he says it's strictly because they give away 10% of their profits to go towards some fundraiser, you know, and I actually do like the fact that they're shut down on Sundays so their employees can have one day off to be with their family, and that's something that we're looking into doing. But yeah, just to, to piggyback on what you're saying, you can't you can't give up. I mean, if you give up, you're gonna have to punch the clock for somebody else, and all yeah. all your work and all your life is gonna go towards making money for other people and wondering what if I had stuck with my dream? What if I had sacrificed some of my time and energy when it didn't seem like it made a difference and just kept on going, you know? So I'm happy to be here. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, remind me to talk to you about this later. I have a chef friend who you remind me a lot of because he, he opened up his own restaurant in Brooklyn that I used to work for. He's a super dude, all about natural foods, uh, the you know um, farm-to-table sort of type stuff. He, he would be a really good guy for you to connect with. I'm going to connect you to him, and uh, maybe you guys can mastermind and talk about your restaurant. What's the name of that place? Um, it's called the Brooklyn Commune in Brooklyn. Thanks. The guy was on, uh, yeah, he's, I'll, I'll tell you about it later, but a um, cool. uh, really, really good friend of mine, Chef Chris Scott. He, um, he was on sh uh, that show Chopped. Really good dude. I'll put you in touch with him. Anyway. 
getting off topic a little bit. Because, <laughs> you know, you never know the, the type of things that will come up. And that's why we're in a mastermind, because we're here to, like, spark and generate new ideas and kind of create things that maybe we haven't thought about and forge new relationships. So that's good stuff. Um, why don't we do a little bit of reading, and then we'll try to then we'll stop for today. Always good to get some new information into our brains and discuss it. Okay. Hey, before you start the reading, you mind if I Just share something? Forget. Oh, yeah, go for it, man. What were you saying, Valerie? Don't forget what? There's a solution to everything except for death. So even though sometimes it feels like you're not actually doing anything, there is a solution. You'll feel the resonation. You'll feel the magnetism to feel the magnetization, but it's a solution to everything except for death. So you keep on keeping on. You don't stop. Once you made a commitment to it, it's a commitment to, like I said this morning on the call, it's a global responsibility that we have. We put our names out there. We put ourselves out there. We put our commitment and our visions out there. And like I, we heard the government call, you know, I spoke with Rhonda and Brian because I've known them for so many years. I'm like, do you guys understand? It's like they were like the coal miners who opened for so many people to walk through. They never stopped, not one day, because of their tenacity. There are countless, numerous, hundreds of people who walk through that hole and have a life free of being family, traveling the world, having the, the thing of freedom. They didn't stop. So, personally, unless I'm dead or bleeding, I'm not stopping. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. I, I take your word for it. She tells me how it is. No, I was just going to share something because um, I've been in class in about 15 minutes. But yeah, uh, from what I heard, I had my connection issues like usual, and I was finishing up my workout from the beginning. Um, everything that you guys shared is powerful. Was you know everything that you share is powerful. Chef Mike shared what he's passionate about, how you know, everything he touched base on the food industry and all that, which I heard Rob mention as well, you know, that, that we all have our disciplines with eating. And I just want to touch base a little bit on that. Um, I've tried various diets. Actually, I haven't ate meat in about three months now, and I just got my yearly checkup. And I'm probably more healthy now than I was then when I was putting all that junk into my body. Um, I was worried about losing weight. I'm actually, I gained like five pounds, which is pretty good because I'm pretty skinny as it is. Um, but yeah, if, if you watch any of the food documentaries, they dated back to lots of uh, Hippocrates who said, let thy food be thy medicine. You know, you always hear people say, you are what you eat. Um, same thing that goes with feeding your mind and, and working out physically and staying fit. If, if you do all that and then you're loading your body up with junk and crap, you know, that's going to have some type of effect. And you heard how Chef Mike is passionate. He shared his passion. Valerie, like she just said right now, she she tells it how it is, and I can't say it better than she can. So, uh, her she'll tell you straight up. And Rob, what you just shared right now is is powerful. You even, you know, whether we get off topic or not, you know, it's yeah. you a message. And like our our topic today is procrastination. You you, we hardly touch base on that today, but you said it yourself. You almost did not do this hangout today. Yeah. I was, and you, wasn't feeling you know like it. <laughs> yeah, you did it. You did it. I know. I had the, I had the same thing. Procrastination. Excuse my language. But procrastination is a bitch. Honestly. Back <laughs> <laughs> if if you allow it to, if you let it. And I almost, um, I almost did the didn't do the hangout as well today. I almost didn't do my workout. You know what? I came home. I did my workout, and luckily it was a recovery day, so it was easy. It was shorter time. I didn't have to work as hard. Um, I'm on the hangout now. Unfortunately, I have to go. But, you know, I definitely picked up bits and pieces of information and knowledge and that I gained from. And that's what I do every time I'm on one of these hangouts. And you got to awesome. keep going. Three feet from gold. Um, mm -hmm. If you're not familiar too much with that, they explain it more in Napoleon Hill's Thinking Grow Rich. got to keep going. You know, and, and all this work pays off. I was on a hangout last night that said, you know, you can make it, whether it's one year from now or 15 years from now. 
if you consistently put in the work, if you're that passionate about it, like Chef Mike's passionate about his restaurant, Rob is passionate about his theme park, Val is passionate about helping kids, and I, I've yet to share my story. I've yet to share my story, but like Rob said, you know, I can do whatever, I can get whatever I want, and you can too. All of us can, as long as you don't procrastinate, as long yeah. as you keep, you don't give up. Quitters never win, and winners never quit. It's as simple as that. Exactly. Now repeat it. So um, <laughs> I'll pass it on. Repeat after me. And I'll probably ready. Yes. Repeat after me. <laughs> it's not about us. It's, it's not, not about, about us. us. It's, about it's us. not about us. Word. It's not about us. It's not oh, about man. us. I'm I'm actually really getting inspired right now because I'm thinking of different ways to get this message out to the world. Um, it's so funny because new ideas just keep coming to me as I listen to all you guys. I'm like, why don't we make this into a podcast? So now I'm like Googling, okay, how do we turn a Google Hangout into like a live daily podcast? Um, one of the reasons, Mike's a film buff. I was listening to um, Kevin Smith, who is the director of Clerks, and he has like a daily podcast called Smodcast. He has like five different podcasts he does in different days. And um, I got interested in that because... I heard a story, I've been a fan of his for, for a while, but I heard he just created a movie, he just stopped filming a movie called Tusk, based on a podcast that he did. He was just on a podcast with him and his friend Scott Mosier, and they were just talking, and they were talking about this article, or this, this ad that was placed on Gumtree.com for a dude who um, was looking as like a lonely guy in Brighton, England, looking for someone to rent uh, rent a room in his house. And he said, I'm a well-traveled man, and the best three years of my life, I, I stayed on this island, and my only companion on this island was this walrus. And and he was like my best friend, and when I left, I, was, I missed him. So uh, I'm, I'm renting this room completely for free under one condition, that you dress up in this walrus suit, <laughs> And you, you you can have the run of my house. You can do whatever you want, but for two hours a day, you have to dress up in this walrus suit, and you have to catch like fish in your mouth. I have to feed you fish and crabs, and you can't make human sounds. You only have to make walrus sounds, and and that was like a real thing. And and his mind, his gears started turning, and he's like, "Wow, I could turn this into a movie." And so in that hour long podcast, him and his friend just like kind of came up with this idea, and it was just an it wasn't just an idea that that left. He actually followed through on it, and he asked his Twitter followers, walrus yes or walrus no, should I actually make this into a movie? And everyone but one person on Twitter said yes, and he turned it into kind of like a horror film, like like maybe like a comical horror film. I haven't seen it. It didn't come out yet because he just – and this, this happened six months ago, right? Six months ago when just from an idea that they randomly generated – from this random article that ad on like everything is 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 synchronistic, right? So an ad that they found that they turned this into an idea for a horror film, almost like the Human Centipede, this like weird guy who like sews people together, but it would be like a lone. Did it, did everything stop? Yeah. No, oh, I was I was really interested. He was on a roll. It's the drugs. <laughs> Kevin Smith is actually Kevin Smith is uh, one of my favorites, and I've been accused of looking like Silent Bob for a lot of years. So I, I didn't even know that J that. Kevin Smith had his own podcast, and I started doing one about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And one of my friends goes, "Wow, you're writing a screenplay and you've got a podcast, and you look just like Kevin Smith. Like, uh, you want to try your own thing?" I was like, "I'm a chef. He's not a chef. <laughs> like, I didn't need to model my wife after that dude. I I didn't do this on purpose. 
We just happen to like the same things. And uh, somebody even blasted me on the way I smoked cigarettes back when I did. I could pull a cigarette right out of my pack without taking the pack out of the pocket. And somebody goes, Kevin Smith did that. You learned that from him. And I said, you know what? I've been doing this since before Clerks came out. And I learned how to do it because I didn't like bumming cigarettes to people. So if I just pulled it right out of my pa pocket, nobody could see how many I had left in the pack. So whenever he recorded his first movie, Clerks, he actually wasn't a smoker. If you watch him, he never did inhale. So I've been smoking since before him. I didn't do everything like him, but I am a huge fan of his. So I, think <laughs> I accidentally am influenced by him quite a bit, so much so that one of the screenplays I wrote, after I got done with it, I went back and reread the first few pages, and it was almost exactly the opening of Clerks. So I had to scrap all of it. And I was a little frustrated. It feels, I don't know if it's possible. Can you be reincarnated by, uh, as someone that's already alive still? Is that a thing? That's maybe. Maybe the consciousness can can uh, switch bodies. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can. yeah. Sorry, I missed it. I missed it. What did I, what, what I miss? Well, I was... Just... You your ear. <laughs> what? Stop. I'm going to go outside. It's too nice outside. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. My computer crashed. I don't know what's up with that. You were on a roll, too, man. I don't know, dude. I got to finish that story. It was super exciting. But I want to hear whatever you're talking about. Well, I was just trying to keep the feet alive, you know? I was just rambling on about how much I like Kevin Smith. Yo, Kevin Smith is awesome. He he's from Jersey, just like me. Nice. Anyway, um, yeah, dude, like the idea for the podcast, right? So he took this one idea from this like random ad on Gumtree about this like lonely British dude who just wanted someone to dress up like a, a walrus, and he actually made the decision to turn that into a real movie, and he got feedback from his Twitter followers and. It's kind of like a more cuddly version. He describes it as a, a cuddly version of the human centipede, like the dude awesome. who you gotta you gotta listen to that original podcast. It's hilarious. I listened to it today, and uh, who who like sews people together, like sews like someone's mouth to someone's butthole. It's like I've never seen the movie, but anyway. So the tusk. It's called Tusk, by the way. It's called Tusk by Kevin Smith, and it's kind of like a horror-ish thing uh, where like. He would actually sew the costume onto the guy, but like you hear it, you hear, you hear him formulating the movie. You hear him walking through the scenes in his mind, and he's just getting super excited. And then six months later, he casts people and he shoots the movie. He actually does it. I think Haley Joel Osment is in it. Um, the the movie poster just just uh, was released for it. Uh, Justin Long is in it. It's like a real cast. And he shot it for a very low budget, for like $3 million, which is super, super low budget. That's awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. I don't know where I was going with that, but... Uh, oh, and it turned out that the article was fake, but he, he came up with the movie anyway. And that's what we can do. Like, we can, we can create life-changing, world-shifting ideas, and we can turn this into a podcast that people would... You know, we don't have to just talk about we're called the traveling mastermind. We don't just have to talk about entrepreneurship. We don't just have to. We're not limited to a box, right? We can talk about whatever comes up. We're a group of people who are literal mastermind who travel around the world who discuss and share ideas. And whether we get off topic or not, it doesn't matter. We can talk about meditation. We can talk about movies. We can even come up with ideas for movies right now. We can, we can talk about theme parks. We can talk about restaurants. We can talk about consciousness. We can talk about whatever the hell we want to talk about because we're free to do that and we are a mastermind of people. So I think this format lends itself great to a podcast that, that we can get out there. So I'm going to learn how to, to transfer Google Hangouts to podcasts and we can reach a wider audience of people and who knows who we can affect with our message if we stay consistent. And I love you guys because you are the guys, you are the core who have stayed consistent with me even though we didn't want to do it. Corey had other stuff to do. I wasn't feeling it today. Mike is just a trooper, man. Val is always in it unless she's injured or bleeding or dead. She's <laughs> she's going to be a part of this. Towel, like you're getting done in the car on the end of the airport, you know, whatever I can. Yo, she's like amazing. <laughs> well, Crazy one. I'll tell you what, guys. I've got uh, two other people in the last week have approached me about being on podcast with them. And I have an existing one that I used to do that I'm starting back up. If you want to know about recording equipment, I've got all oh. that stuff.